From the newsroom of the Bryant College Station Eagle, this is the Brazos Sports Press Kids. And now, the Eagle High School Sports Team, Alex Miller and Jake Weiss. What's up, y'all? You're listening to the Brazos Sports Preps Cast. I'm Alex Miller from the Eagle, joined always by Jake Weiss and Andrew Tinio. Guys, today is Halloween. What's the best costume that you had when you were a kid? Oh, Andrew, you gotta go first. I thought he was gonna say best candy. So. Oh man. Well, but that too. Maybe. Well. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's also a hard one, but I feel like I could answer that one better. What, what got you going when you saw can? When you got to dump it open, when you got home. Ooh, uh, anything chocolate. Uh, I'm a big chocolate candy guy. Okay. Uh, not a huge fan of like the Starburst. Like I know, I know a lot of people like that, but chocolate candy, like Hershey's, Mr. Good Bar. Okay. Like, I just bought a big bag of that actually, because I was worried about. Uh, I don't think anyone will come by my apartment complex, but I was like, oh man, don't don't want to be that house. Don't want to be that house, Andrew. No. Oh gosh, uh, if we're going my candy, probably Kit Kats are always yes. the go-to Ooh. for me. Um, I this could start a debate, but no candy corn. Anything yep. but candy corn. That's okay. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm glad we're say, we're on the same page there. Do you like candy? I feel like you like candy. It's corn. all right. I mean, I don't know. Oh, like, man. It's one of those things. Like Dude. I haven't had it probably since like. Hmm. I mean, you have it so it's you have it so few. Like I can't even think the last time I had it. But it, I wouldn't say it's terrible. So what's the best costume you had? Um. I had a Freddy Krueger one one year. That's Ooh. probably probably the best one. I think it was like the last time I did a full on costume too. But I'm being Marty McFly this year. Yeah. Oh. So it'll be very interesting. I got a puffer jacket, jean jacket, and everything. So I'm excited. Okay. Um. Then there was a year I went as Buzz Lightyear when I was real little. Like wow. The family liked that. Yeah. We all liked that one. So. I, I think my favorite. I was Thomas the Tank Engine one year. So mm. Really. You know. Got it. Got to love. We Thomas. got pictures of that. Love I kind of want to see. Like, I mean, it's probably somewhere. Maybe oh, I'll, 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 I'll see about that. All right, Mister Lightyear, <laughs> to infinity <laughs> and beyond we go. Love it. This is it. It's the final week of the regular season. I think by my count, there's at least 16 Brazos Valley teams that have punched their tickets to the playoffs. We got three fighting for a spot. One of those is going to have to just be watching from home. We'll talk about them in a bit. And unfortunately, this is it for eight teams. So, uh, you know, they're uh, they're going to be playing for for pride and and school what spirit. is school spirit? There you mm-hmm. go. Some district title implications this week and a playoff spot up for grabs in Leon County. We'll talk about that one here in a bit too. Hey, first, all right, we've got to revisit last Friday's game between Oof. College Station and m Consolidated. The Cougars, of course came out on top 49 to 42 if they had played this on the ncaa football video game it would have been an <laughs> instant classic jake you know what what really stood out to you about that one yeah i think uh really for me you know obviously college station's been impressive all year you know uh and we've we've seen it firsthand uh what really stood out to me first and first foremost was that uh, man can 42 points against cougars I was pretty impressed with that, man. They really seemed to be uh, hit, hitting their stride at the right time. You know, I, I know we said uh, before the game that they were kind of playing their best ball, but, uh, man, I kind of think we saw it Friday night. And then for College Station, man, you know, you always hear the phrase, you know, good teams find a way to win. They did exactly that. I mean, you know, going in their rivalry game, uh, I know it's technically – it's weird. You know, you play – you it's, this is kind of a weird game, I feel like, because, you know, it is an away game, but I'd say it's probably more of a neutral site. <laughs> I, I guess like it is weird you're using visiting locker rooms and you're at the other school but it we saw a crowd Alex it was sell out on both sides so there I don't were, really know it's like the know, Giants playing the Jets on Sunday night yeah I exactly. mean it, it was kind of I mean there was probably seven or eight thousand people there yeah that's a lot of people and it was probably pretty split fitty fitty yeah so it's yeah. weird like I was uh, whenever I talk with people about the, these games I'm like well it's it's a rivalry game it's like it is a way but it's not, but uh, yeah, I mean, good teams find a way to win, and they did that. Uh, Jake Pivato had a really good game. He had those two touchdowns, which, hey, I know you talked with uh, Stoney and Arrington, made in about it afterwards. Kind of the same play there. Uh, into the first half, they tied it up, and then he had the game winner with 16 seconds, so I uh, thought that was pretty neat. You know, the confidence that you got to have in a guy to to be like, all right, we're going to run this play, and we have confidence that, that he's going to get it done. 
I mean, you, you gotta you gotta have some trust to be able to to do that. Yeah, and uh, obviously they did they did because what first one was with I think what one second before right before the half, mm-hmm. and the second one obviously was with sixteen seconds. So uh, that was kind of a surprise to me as someone who hasn't watched them all season. I know you guys have probably watched them. Probably a little bit more than I have. Uh, I was surprised he's kind of there. Se- seems to be at least the kind of the go-to yeah, guy there. Yeah, I mean, there. you know, he was he was on the varsity team last year, but he was not like their go-to guy by any means. And yeah. he's really emerged as like, I I think Peyton Cashin has the most receptions, but I think Jake Pivido has the most yards. Yeah. And when they need a play, they they go to him a lot of times, and and he gets he gets plays in chunks. So, you know. You wrote your column about where you think this Cougar team can go. You know They close out the regular season at home against Pflugerville Hendrickson this week. They're probably going to win that game. They're going to get a home playoff game the next week against the fourth-seeded team. You probably like the Cougars' odds in the next two games, but after that, you know, where do you, where do you, where do you, what's the ceiling uh, for this team, Jake? Gosh, uh, I'm taking a page out of uh, Stony Pryor's playbook. <laughs> I, I, uh, you know, I don't know. Um, just like he said, um, you know, Man, I think they can make a run, uh, but I guess it kind of just depends on how far they go. I mean, they've got for sure two more. Uh, heck, I mean, I think area they could, you know, they'll pass area around, and then after that, I don't know. You you were in, you were kind of going over the bracket a little bit with me and kind of showing me some things, and it's kind of like, well, that, that could be trouble. Well, that and it's kind of like, well, what, what's gonna happen? You know, I, I don't know, man. I hate to go with the cop out answer, but I don't know. But kind of just gonna have to wait and see what happens when they get in the playoffs. Uh, you know, I don't think that's a bad answer. But to your point, too, good teams find ways to win. Yeah. If College Station wants to reach what its ceiling might be, they're gonna have to find ways to win games in November, like they have the last couple years against some probably pretty salty teams, like say a Smithson Valley or maybe a Fulcher who's trying to break through. So I think I don't want to be the Debbie Downer either. I think College Station, in a way, can go as far if they need to clean up some special teams issues. That was kind of the reoccurring theme the past three weeks. It, from a, from a distance, it looked like it reared its ugly head again, and they can get through some games. But special teams that may be an area that may actually cost them later down the road. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, Ellis Myers had the kickoff return yeah. to start the game. You know, they they had the roughing the punter. They had the ball to hit the back of the shoulder. <laughs> I mean, it was just like, it was a good thing they didn't have to kick a field goal at the end of the game. Who knows? Can Saul might have blocked it and returned it for a touchdown. No kidding. <laughs> uh, but I think it was interesting, too. Stoney did talk about that. You know, he said, hey, mm. uh, Alex, you talked with him, and he kind of said, you know, hey, we want at the end, if we do reach that ceiling, we want it to be because the team beats us, not because we beat ourselves. So, uh, I mean, and I think he said, too, to you that uh, they'd be working on special teams uh, this week. Didn't you hear that? Yeah, yeah. I don't doubt it. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> obviously, they, they do know, Andrew, like you said. Uh, uh, you know, yeah. uh, if that is something they probably do want to work on because, mm-hmm. yeah, they don't want to beat themselves. They want a team to come in there and beat them, and they just kind of have to tip their cap at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. You know, on the flip side, like you said, Jake, what a showing from Consol. I mean, this is a team that's – really starting to hit its stride at the right time. And I got to say, I think I got a little ahead of myself last week when I said Consol could only finish as high as third because there looks like there's a path to second place. If see, I, Okay, I think <laughs> I've done my math right, and I've, and I've reached out to get confirmation, have not heard back. So, you know, check the eagle.com for a, for a better clarification <laughs> if my math is wrong. But... I, if Cedar Park beats Georgetown, which, by the way, the Timberwolves are favored to beat the Eagles, if Cedar Park wins by 12 or less, I think that the Tigers would finish second based on point differential. That's the difference between having a home playoff game and going on the road to you know a San Antonio area school. Mm. So I think I know which one Consol would prefer. Now, <laughs> here's the deal. Consol still got to take care of business on Friday, though. Leander Glenn, they're not a great team, but they give people so much grief with that triple option. Consol only beat them by two last year. We just talked about College Station, yeah. team that went to the state championship game last year. They had to beat. They had to go to double overtime to beat Leander Glenn. Like this team gives their opponents hell every time they play them. It seems. Yeah, no kidding. I or think, a lot of times, uh, at least. La- talking about that College Station game real quick last year, I'm pretty sure I, someone was. it came up in the press box uh, at, at, against Georgetown, College Station-Georgetown game. Pretty sure someone said 
College Station only had like four possessions in uh, regulation uh, in that game. Uh, so yeah, you've got to take advantage when you're when you've got the ball. You've got to take advantage against Leander Glenn. You've got to come away with points pretty much every time. Well, on the other side of town, losses by Brian and Rudder last week have them on the outside looking in of the playoff picture. This is going to be it for the Vikings and the Rangers. You know, first, Andrew, what a heartbreaking loss for Brian. Can you just kind of take us through kind of that shootout loss to, to Hutto last Friday? There, I mean, there was a lightning delay in the area, but I'm pretty sure there's a whole lot of thunder and lightning on the field when it comes to the play. I mean, 129 combined points just... Man, like you said, it's just it's one of those hard things where you know you put up sixty three points and you know somehow it's not enough. And there there were instances throughout the game where it, it was porous defense, but most of the time I felt like it was really good offense from both sides, whether it be Hutto's combo of Will Ham and Alex Green, or if it's you know Terrence Lewis just doing what Terrence Lewis does against Hutto. Apparently, he had four touchdowns last year, had a couple more on Friday. Or you know Derek Ramsey making a big play. I mean, coach said it after the game that he just thought it was a really good game, regardless of how many points were scored. It was just one of those, you know, similar to you guys, an instant classic in a way. Uh, it was just a heartbreaker for the Vikings, though. Yeah, we talked last week. Brian had to win that game to stay in contention for for the playoffs, and uh, you know we knew Hutto's offense could give them trouble, and mm-hmm. that they were gonna have to slow them down, and. Uh, you know, I guess maybe it's just one of those things where, where you tip your cap and mm-hmm. and just kind of realize like you get you, you try to give it your all. Yeah. Uh, also, big tip of the hat to uh, to Hippo Cafe. Quick plug from Hutto. Really, <laughs> really good restaurant. Yeah. How many hippo statues you count? I only, I probably didn't get near close enough, but I saw twenty five. Whoa! I so think that I've is heard that there's like seven hundred. Yeah, so I, I the, Which is in, ridiculous. in Hutto or I, the thing is, yeah, I, man. I have a school. I, I only no, went like down in the town. Oh, okay, never I, been there. Before. I only went down two roads though, so I saw twenty five hippos in two roads. So I'm, well, I'm pretty sure there was a lot more left to scavenge and around Hutto. If you go to Hutto, the stadium's like one of the first things that yes. you, that you yes get to when you get into the town. Yes, so yeah, I did not see near enough. I'm sorry. They're everywhere, the hippo cafe is great. Okay, Rudder. They had Randall on the ropes last week, mm-hmm. but uh, Lions pulled away in the second half to get the win. Did, Cody Billings left the game again with yeah, uh, did, with an yeah. injury, mm-hmm. and uh, you know the the Rangers' offense just it seemed like they kind of sputtered there in the second half. Ra- uh, Redder closes their regular season and and their season against Montgomery on the road this week. Yeah, I mean, uh, if you have Cody, if you have Cody out again, uh, unfortunately, you know this isn't the first time this has happened this season, so we all know what'll happen. It'll be Jaquez at quarterback. Obviously, you know uh, he can play quarterback. Uh, heck, I mean, he got him a win when he played quarterback once this season. Uh, or excuse me, did he Andrew, you covered the Lamar consolidated game. I was way back when district first started, but uh, Jaquez was quarterback for that one, right? Billings played one snap in like the second quarter, but it was it was it was, it was a it was a mostly Jaquez game. Yes, so yeah, obviously, you know what we know what he can do, both at receiver and running back. I mean, they pretty much use him all over the field, but uh, yeah, I mean, hopefully, runner can come away with some more momentum. I mean, heck, you think about where they were last year, you know, just two wins on the season. Uh, they've already surpassed that number. You get another win this year. I mean, that's two wins in district. You got something to build on for next year because, I mean, you do lose a lot of talented guys, you know, Ryan Campbell, uh, Hunter McGarry, but, you know, Cody and Jaquise, they're both back next year. Uh, You have plenty of guys coming back, but, man, if you can get a win here against Montgomery on the road too, not an easy place to win, obviously, we know that. Uh, I feel like, you know, disappointing, obviously, didn't get back to the playoffs like they wanted to, but still got a lot more positive momentum than, uh, you know, the season they had before, kind of that nightmare, if you will. Yeah, I forgot to mention, Brian closes its season against Harker Heights on Thursday, by the way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Jake, what are you going to take away from this Brian team? Well, you know, I think, uh, and I've talked with a lot of the players about this. I know, Andrew, you've been doing a lot of Brian features. I don't know if you've heard the same thing, but, man, that Temple game, I think that's kind of how, uh, if, if the Brian players want to remember the season, you know, they've all talked about how a lot of their favorite moments this season was that Temple game. Uh, I think, you know, obviously, up and down year for Brian, uh had a really strong start in district, went 2-0, and had the win over Temple. What, first win against Temple in a while? A long while. time, yeah. put it that way. Yeah, yeah. and 53 points. Uh, then they beat Cove next year uh, or next week to go 2-0. and Didn't finish the way they wanted, obviously, but I feel like, once again, kind of slimmered or rudder, got some positive momentum. 
Uh, I mean, heck, you think about it. They had to bring in two, you know, two new quarterbacks this year. One is a senior, one is a junior. Uh, you get Boone Turner back, who, who kind of became the starter. Uh, you get Terrence Lewis back. Mm-hmm. I know Tyson Turner. You know, unfortunately, they didn't get him for the whole season. Mm-hmm. I know he's a little banged up there to- towards the end. Uh, and I guess he could play this week, but you know, he did miss some time. Uh, Tyson did, but you know, I think for Brian, maybe just you get a win here, go away with some more positive momentum for next year. A couple of those young guys kind of used to that game now, uh, that 6A game, and, uh, yeah, just hope for the best, you know. Yeah. Hey, while we're talking about our local teams, Brazos Christian, they went on the road last week. You got a big win over mm. Fort Worth Lake Country Christian, 28-21. to Cooper Murr hit Jackson Caffey for the game-winning touchdown, 31 seconds to go. Caffey sealed the deal with an interception on the ensuing drive. Lake Country Christian, that is at the very front of the neighborhood my dad lives in. So I know that is a long <laughs> drive to make, and that had to be a good one for the Eagles coming back after a win like that. I think Coach said three hours. I talked to Coach. It's mm. Yep, he it is like hours. right at three hours. So, Dang, Coach, perfect. you were correct. You know, you got to talk with Coach Washington on Monday. What, what did he have to say about the win, his team, and just kind of where the Eagles are headed? Yeah, man, uh, big couple of weeks. Big couple of weeks for Brazos Christian. Uh, you know, you, you know, I know they had a buy-in there, but, you know, you get your first district win. Uh, you know, two excuse me, three weeks ago uh, to a team you lost to last year. So another twenty-eight to twenty-one win against uh, I think it was North Lake uh, Christian. Yeah, mm-hmm. Northland Christian. Northland Christian. Um, you beat them. All right, that's a big one. Then you go on a bye. Then you have this game against Lake uh, Country Christian. You know, kind of keep that momentum going. They're on a three-game win streak. They've got a lot of confidence right now, and and confidence was something he talked about. You know, he said, "Hey, we've got ha- we've had some confidence, and that's been a real big key here late." Kind of similar to Consol and College Station. Well, especially Consol, you know, kind of playing their best ball right now. Uh, been a long time since they won a district title. Uh, Coach Washington, remember, second year, last year, uh, you know, took them to the state semifinals. This year, they won a district title. Man, that's pretty good for your first uh, two years. That's not too shabby. Because uh, I believe, what, Alex, it's 2015 was the last time? Yep. yep. They that's won? that's yeah. what the notes say. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> I, I was researching it earlier this week, and I, that's what I found. But, uh, yeah, 2015 beat St. Joseph. That was just to claim a share. Uh, but last time I was out, right, 2013. So it's been a long time. Uh, coincidentally, they beat St. Joseph 2013, too. So, uh Hey, maybe they need to try to get back into a district with the Eagles, uh, St. Joseph somehow. They got to uh, get 11 man back at St. Joe's. I don't know. Yeah, they might want to stay at six man with the way they're playing right that now. That is <laughs> true too. Yeah, I was gonna say, uh, you know, it might be a hard sell, but uh, yeah, I mean, and they have a chance to bring it home again this week. Uh, Rose Hill Christian, apparently their rival did not know that. Uh, that's what Coach Washington, Coach Washington. Hey, everybody's said. got to have a rival. Very yeah, true. true. Coach Washington did say too. He said, "Hey." You know, I'm still new, obviously, but everyone's been telling me this is our rival. So this is our rival, and uh, there you go. Get a rivalry win. Hey, and Roso Christian. I mean, it, I, rivalry games are rivalry games, but hey, they're two and seven on the year. I, I don't know about you guys. I'm, I'm picking Brazos Christian in this one. Uh, rivalry yeah, games are weird. You can throw records out of the, out know, of the equation I for know, most rivalry games. Good teams find ways to win games. <laughs> Hey, Brad right. Christian, good team in my book. So hey, there you go. Right. They're on the road too, but they've been good on the road, man. Uh, three games in a row. Hey, three road wins. I got called out last week for for picking against Brazos Christian, so I I don't want I don't want them thinking I'm a hater again this week. So. Did you pick it because your dad lives right by it, or uh, no? I mean, look. Wow. On paper, on paper. You looked at Lake Country. They're a division ahead of Brazos Christian. That's true. And. And I was like, ah, that's a hard, that, you know, that's a long drive. And, you know, it was a close game. I, I, it was a hard pick to make, but I was like, okay, I'm picking Lake Country because they're a bigger school. They have comparable records. I don't know. I should have I picked the Eagles, man. Well, hey, you got to learn something. Which I, you know, <laughs> Lake Country is also the Eagles, by the way. Yeah, that oh, was very confusing nice. writing the story. I just had to say, Brazos Christian, <laughs> and they're Lake both Country red and blue. So, yeah, very, very confusing. But we got made, we made it work. There you go. All right, let's get to three games to watch here in the area. Leon at Norman G. Battle of Highway Thirty Nine. We talk about rivalry games. Yep. Winner here goes to the playoffs. Loser starts basketball season. So uh, Leon's a big favorite here, but. Rivalry games get weird, uh, especially do. when there's things at stake. They do. You're right. So, 
Uh, Bremond at Iola. You want to talk about about you want to talk about a log jam of a district. 13 2A Division Two. Okay, you got three teams tied for first: Bremond, Chilton, and Granger, and they've all beaten each other. <laughs> The good thing for Bremond is that they beat the brakes off of Granger. So our good friend Jeff Kozowski confirmed with us that if things hold, Bremond would be the number one seed out of that district. Mm. All three of these teams are favored to win this week. So, you know, if they can take care of business, Bremond's going to be the number one seed going into the playoffs there. Hey, don't sleep on the Tigers, man. That's the same, man. Uh, four seed uh, right now in this district. They're the only team not well not tied for a third out of the playoff uh, teams. So, uh, yeah, Iola's, what, they've won six games at this point? Uh, oh, I was saying don't sleep on the Tigers, Jake, oh, but maybe sorry, don't sleep on the Iola. Bulldogs, oh, man. Cow, man. Yeah, wow. Sorry, hey, everybody. hey, don't sleep on the Bulldogs. They're having a season. I was going to say. They're yeah, having yeah, a sorry. season. I was thinking Iola. Sorry, wow. Uh, hey, don't sleep on either of those Yeah, teams. I was going to say yeah. either of those teams. It, that that's been a very competitive district when when you get into things. Oh yeah, definitely. So, all right. Last but certainly not least, Navasota. They're going to be watching from home this week. They need some help though to get into the playoffs. They need one of two things to happen: either El Campo to lose to Brazosport, who is in last place, or Bay City to lose to Stafford, whose only district win is over Brazosport. Got to find a way. Got to hope. Uh, you know, Navasota was kind of in this position last year, if I recall correctly, going into the last week of the season. They had that bye week, um, and, uh, you know, they needed some things to happen, yeah. and it didn't happen for them. So, you know, they're hoping they're hoping one of these teams will get it done. <laughs> yeah, that's the unfortunate thing. I'm curious where, uh, I guess, what Coach Dacus will be doing. You think he goes to one of those two games? I don't know. I don't know. Or do you think he maybe tries to, you know, do a little scouting potentially for playoffs? You know, I I, I really don't know. Yeah. Because I'd be curious. Yeah. They're scoreboard watching for sure, though. Yes. There's no doubt yes. about it. So, um, see if uh, good old fighting Robert Primos from El Campo can <laughs> uh, help <laughs> out and have a soda or something. But all right, any final thoughts as we head into the final week of the regular season? Man, like I said before we started, literally right before we started, like 30 seconds before you hit record, but I just can't believe it's the last week. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I really can't. <laughs> yeah, it it's really flown by. And, you know, November's coming tomorrow. The weather makes it feel like November, so mm -hmm. it's here. It's here. And, hey, next week, it's the playoffs, man. Yeah. And there's few things better than... High school football playoffs in Texas. Let me By tell you. By district, here we go. By district, here we go. Here we go. All right. Well, hey, be sure to check the eagle.com for all of our coverage leading up to this Friday's slate of games and Thursday, I guess, because Brian plays on Thursday. Yeah. But we'll be out covering games. Well, you won't actually, but we will. Um, no, Andrew Andrew has some some fun things to attend to, a friend's wedding or something like that. Something like that. No, yeah, fun. Hey, <laughs> you're going to have fun. <laughs> Send them our best wishes. We'll do. So. But hey, thanks for tuning in to another week of the Brazos Sports Preps Cast. We'll be back next week yep. talking about the playoffs.